back at Epcot for the 2022 International Flower and Garden Festival. We're going to show you all the vegan items that you can enjoy this year and if they're worth trying. If you want to find out all of the detailed descriptions of all the menu items, be sure to head to our site, vegandisneyfood.com. We have a map there that shows you all of the vegan options locations, as well as the garden graze locations, so you can decide where you want to go. It's probably going to take you more than one visit to try all the things this year. There's quite a few. I think there's 11 of the 23 kitchens that we have something to eat at, so very exciting. First up this year, of course, we're going to start with Trowel and Trellis, which is the entirely plant-based booth hosted by Impossible yet again. We are still, of course, missing our farmhouse meatball, but returning favorites are the boneless Impossible Korean short rib with cilantro lime rice, Dan Muji slaw, and kimchi mayonnaise. This was delicious as it was last year. Uh, probably my favorite item of the festival with the poutine coming in a close second, but this is just uh, definitely check this one out. It's one of my favorites. Also at this booth is the Impossible Sausage and Kale Soup, which is not very photogenic, I'll say right up front. Um, it's also a very warm and a little bit spicy soup, so not something that you traditionally associate with summertime or springtime flavors. But I advise ordering it uh, late at night when the sun goes down, right before the park closes. The flavors really are delicious. It's got potatoes in it, it's got impossible sausage, and the kale really just adds a little uh, bit of texture to it. You've got a little hard kind of um, pita bread there that you can crunch. And it's a little bit salty so far this year, but hopefully they work that out. Um, I still enjoy the flavors a lot, and I would get this once the sun goes down, or if it's a cooler day. New this year uh, is the chocolate cake, which is with whipped cassis mousse, raspberry gelato, and fresh raspberries on top. Uh, I've seen some mixed reviews on this, but personally, I really enjoyed it. The cake itself isn't very like overwhelmingly chocolate in flavor or sweet, but it's a very nice uh, moist cake. I really enjoyed it, and the raspberry flavors on both the mousse and the gelato are very natural flavors. They're not like, you know, very fake raspberry um, cough medicine type flavors. So again, this was a very nice addition, and I would definitely get it again. Uh, also switching booths this year are the grilled baby vegetables, which used to be over at the booth um, by Imagination on that walkway, and they've switched that now with the grilled corn. So over here we have the same exact thing as before with hummus and red pepper coulis and various little vegetable baby vegetables that are grilled. Uh, it's served also on like a big slice of eggplant which is a little bit tough to eat usually with um, eat, whether if you bring your own silverware or forks or if you use one of Disney's. It's a little hard to cut through. Personally on opening day I thought the flavors were a little lacking and uh, they could use a little bit more seasoning in the in the vegetables and also uh, maybe grill them a little bit more. So I'm not sure I would go out of my way to get this one again, um, but I will check on it later in the festival and see if they've uh, improved at all. Right down from the trowel and trellis booth is the Jardín de Fiestas over in Mexico. And last year we had the Sopa de Chorizo there. This year they have put it on a tostada. It's not the giant one that you have, I believe, at the Festival of the Holidays, but it's a, a good handheld size. And for some reason, they are putting on queso fresco on that. But if you ask for it without the cheese, once you order it, just go to the booth and say, no cheese, please. And that will be vegan as is. This was a delicious option. Um, the chorizo is not spicy at all, so it's just kind of like taco seasoning when you're eating it. But again, it's like the perfect handheld size, and uh, I would definitely get this again. Returning this year, again, we also have avocado toast with marinated toy box tomatoes on toasted ciabatta. 
And last year, this toast was kind of a nuisance because we thought it would be uh, vegan if you removed the goat cheese that came on it last year. But then we were told that the bread had dairy in it. Um, that turned out to not be the case, but they were toasting it in a pan filled with butter. This year, that is not the case. It is completely plant-based as is. You don't have to make any modifications. It is delicious. Uh, the ciabatta, for me, tasted a little bit uh, sweet. So it was kind of an interesting combination of flavors there with the avocado toast and garlicky flavors, uh, the tomatoes, and of course, edible flowers on there. You have some nice watermelon radish. So definitely get this, if only for the photo, if that's what you're looking for, pretty photos to take um, during the festival. This one is gorgeous and delicious as well. It's also part of the Garden Graze. Over in Germany, we have the returning Bauernmarkt, which features, of course, the potato pancakes with house-made applesauce. If you have visited during the festival of the holidays, you know about the potato latkes. This is the same basic potato pancakes. Uh, however, in the festival of the holidays, they are served with the vegan sour cream and chives. This time around, they are served with applesauce. So it's a nice combination of savory and sweet there. If you don't like that flavor combo, you can ask for it without the applesauce, of course. This is a good serving size too. You get two pretty good sized potato pancakes. So definitely um, give this a visit. This is also part of the Garden Graze as well. Over at La Isla Fresca between France and Morocco, we have a brand new plant-based dessert, the Coconut Tres Leches which is vanilla cake soaked in oat milk, almond milk, and coconut milk. Um, it's covered with a very sweet, fluffy frosting and toasted coconut on top. This was a delicious addition. Um, again, this is also part of the garden graze, so you're really getting some good items here if you're trying to complete that garden graze. I really love this tres leches. I would definitely get it again. Also at La Isla Fresca, I enjoyed the Tropical Breeze, which I had gotten last year and it was a completely different drink made with, I believe, mango and passion fruit. This year it is frozen lemonade and grapefruit juice and simple syrup. They have a non-alcoholic version, which is what I got. It was very refreshing and a great contrast to the super sweet cake. Uh, you can also get the alcoholic version, which comes with Don Q Limon Rum. So check that out as well. Also returning this year over at the refreshment port, which is that little quick serve location between Starbucks and Canada, they have the house-made Italian sausage and peppers poutine. Now again, they're calling this poutine for some reason, I guess because it's near Canada, but it really is not poutine. There's not little cheese curds in it and there's no gravy, which is what traditionally poutine has on it. But what you do get is uh, plant-based Italian sausage. If you had the plant-based macaroni and cheese with Italian sausage during food and wine festival. This is exactly the same uh, topping. And then they do a cheese sauce, which I think is very similar to the same cheese that they do um, on the pasta there as well. And it's served over French fries. So this does have a little kick to it with the Italian sausage. It's a little spicy. It's got uh, red and green peppers in it. And I love this dish so much. Again, it's probably tied for second place with the kimchi um, Korean short rib. This is just, it's delicious. Uh, make sure you get it. It is very filling. It's very heavy. So keep that in mind if you're doing this on a hot summer day um, to plan the rest of your meals accordingly. Over on the walkway to Imagination is the Flavorful Kitchen, hosted by Advent Health. This is where you got the baby vegetables last year. And I'm not sure if the baby vegetables maybe aren't as good because they are not being grilled out in the open like the corn is now, but this is where you're gonna find the grilled corn on the cob. And you can smell this corn on the cob all the way down around World Showcase Promenade. It is, it smells so good, it's just like, really good grill smells. Um, it is coated in a savory garlic spread and then I believe on top is just kind of like um, toasted garlic which that was a little bit too much for me. I, I do enjoy the garlic spread but the garlic 
little bits on top tasted a, a bit chemically to me. I don't know if, it, if that was just me or if it was just an off day. Um, sometimes you can get corn that is not cooked as long as it should be. So this, this one might be hit or miss. It is part of the garden graze as well. So if you're trying to complete that, you can um, check it out. Of course, you do not have to get one of each of the five items during the garden graze. You can um, get two of one of the same items if you prefer that as well. A little bit more on the Garden Grays menu items. They are the corn on the cob, the coconut tres leches, the potato pancakes, the grilled baby vegetables, and the avocado toast. So once you get all five of those, or again, you can mix and match if you prefer one over the other, you head over to Pineapple Promenade and get your completer surprise, which is a brand new souvenir cup this year filled with mango lime Dole Whip, which is the same flavor it was last year. Um, depending on how they do the the little flavor mix-ins there when they're creating it, it could taste a little more like lime or a little bit more like mango. It definitely was more mango-y last year for me. This year it was pretty limey. Um, so you get the, the Dole Whip completer with your little souvenir cup and a package of wildflower seeds to plant at home. Also at Pineapple Promenade, they do have regular plain pineapple Dole Whip if you'd like that, and the famous Frozen Desert Violet Lemonade, which is non-alcoholic. It comes with a cute little edible flower on top. I saved this for the end for me because I knew it was gonna be a hot day and this was super refreshing. It is very sweet also, but it does have that tang of the lemonade. Um, the tartness really balances out all of the sweet things that you've enjoyed throughout the day is nice and refreshing, so I definitely recommend that as well. Thank you so much for watching. Again, I will update the uh, website, vegandisneyfood.com, with all of my reviews. The pricing will be on there in case anything changes over the course of the festival. And we will also be looking into vegan beers, which I didn't hear back from any of the breweries in time for this video, but check on the site and I will update it as I hear back from breweries so you know which beers you can enjoy during the festival. Again, it runs through July 5th. So thank you so much for watching. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and subscribe for more vegan Disney food videos, your plant-based guide to the magic.